Ya Allah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, do you see my screen, Dr. Naif? Do you guys see my screen? Yeah. Yes, we can see. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you, Dr. Naif, for inviting me. Um, always happy to be uh, there. And uh, today I'm going to talk about general ideas about how uh, to take care of sick babies, whether they are premature or they are have other type of sickness, such as surgery or malformations or asphyxia or infection, whatever the, uh, whether it's at birth or uh, later on. Of course, there is a difference between treating sick newborn and sick child. There is a little bit of, of difference, but uh, the main point today about uh, uh, care of sick newborn. And the objectives of today talks is to talk about golden hour, gentle care, uh, component of initial care, resources, overview, flow, uh, advice, tips, and how uh, we're going to uh, 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 improve the service. Now, you need to know that the survival and the reduction of complications, the better uh, 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 low mortality and low morbidity, it depends on the details. Not the details, but details of the details. Details and details. The more you are oriented to details, uh, the better your outcome. And the uh, golden hour refer to uh, the, now the golden hour started from trauma patients and to prevent the secondary injury and uh, insult after the primary hit. So uh, the first uh, hour postnatal life in both Britam and term is referred to golden hour. Now some people say two hours. <clears throat> And it is practicing all the evidence-based intervention, not only the business, but the physiological evidence. Because as you know, about 70 to maybe 60 to 70% of neonatal carers have no evidence. So it's not only evidence, but a physiological-based uh, care. And again, it's adopted from adult trauma. And uh, the concept can be applied to term and preterm babies. However, the evidence that use of golden hour is uh, less obvious in term baby. It's more beneficial in preterm baby. Now, the initial care or the golden hour, including neonatal resuscitation, postnatal care, and there are some forgetting points that people forget about transport, the tra period of transport, and we also talk about respiratory and cardiovascular support, and of course the initial part of the journey in the nursery. Uh, the evidence of golden hour in a preterm babies are very obvious. It, con it has a huge control on hypothermia, and you need to remember that effect of hypothermia on, on the baby is more than the effect of a complex congenital heart disease. The other forgetting point is the hypoglycemia. So these are very important because these are the determinant of the outcome, temperature and sugar level. Uh, the uh, IVH also improved with golden hour, BBD and ROP. Now there's something called gentle care when we deal with these very sick babies, mean less harm. So if you cannot provide benefit, we do uh, no harm, which means we will always look for best benefits and less invasive. Early aggressive feeding. So the feeding start early. Uh, Dr. Naif, can I ask questions or it just like a, a, a talk? So I, I want to ask why early feeding is a determinant of outcome. Anybody knows? And what do we mean by early feeding? Anybody have any idea? Don't feel shy. It's a just chit chat. Anybody? Okay, so let me speak. So you have a placenta that gives nutrition to the baby and each nutritional item has a infusion rate. So for example, the protein is about 2.5 to three grams per kg per day from placenta. The sugar is about 1.5 uh, milligram per kg per minute. So that's one. Second, the baby has a compensatory mechanism when there is stress. So when the placenta start to be, start aging, start become old, 
or so it have pathological problem, the baby start to compensate. Same happen when you cut placenta. Baby has a compensation. The compensation of the baby is somewhere between six to 18 hours. That's at the term baby. So the term baby can compensate when you deprive them from nutrition, they can compensate from six to 18 hours. After that, they cannot compensate. Now, the lower the gestation, there's less the complication. So at 23, at 24 weeks, they can compensate for about 30 minutes. After that, they start suffer. So if you don't provide them with additional or enough supply, they won't survive. So it's very important to remember that feeding should be aggressive and early. And you need to remember if you are scared, now there is very important role. There is no MPO order in an ICU. So for in my unit, nobody allowed to write MPO order, never. And if they want to write an MPO, they have to write an official email to me and approve it, then there we go. We don't, only two condition, approve neck, surgery. That's the only possibilities of MPO. No residuals, no abdominal distension, no uh, passing, uh, anything is not allowed. So it's very serious about MPO order. So that's remember, early, no MPO order. That's one. Second is EBM, avoid formula. So you have either the maternal uh, EBM or you can have a donor EBM. So if you plan the, the delivery over 23 weeks, you need to plan the EBM from a donor prior the delivery. And you need to remember also that the EBM of a term is different from a preterm and a EBM after 21 days of life is different from before 21 days of life. The second is aggressive TPN. So I start TPN in the labor room. So we have three types of uh, TPN. We have TPN starter, we have TPN standard, and we have TPN prescribed. Now the TPN starter is ready-made and it's only protein, no electrolyte. Because they're very important too, sugar and protein. So when you start infusion sugar right away and protein right away, you protect the baby. You prevent the catabolic state. You protect the brain and you make the baby better fighter. Now, unnecessary lines, intubation, test and x-ray, very important part of gentle care. Avoid frequent nursing, touching the baby. You don't need the weight in the first three days. You keep the baby in midline position, noise, light. So you need to remember the uh, uh, sleep and wakefulness cycle of the baby. Because each one, each one of you, if I deprive you from sleep for two days, you will die. You won't able to uh, you do anything. So that's one of the way of all Chinese torturing is to prevent you from sleep and you die. So that's your adult. What about a baby? So if you don't allow baby to sleep, they won't survive. So it's very important to remember that. Uh, uh, noise, you need to be quiet at certain point. And, Family involvement. So what we call it family integrated care or FI care, kangaroo care or something like that. Position, nest, because the baby will feel secure. Remember the baby should also cry, but also should feel secure. If they don't feel secure, they won't have neurodevelopmental outcome at uh, uh, 24 months of life. So the most important point of is the resuscitation. And people think resuscitation is intubating a baby. That's they feel, and, so, and that's incorrect. The least important of resuscitation is intubation. And I define neonatologist is that the person who avoid intubation. So resuscitation need to be ready. And I actually need to be a mobile and ICU, the resuscitation role. So it's very important to be very well equipped. Now, on the initial care, you need to anticipate resuscitation. So you have to have a proper setting. You have to have resources, tools, and people, training, 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 and training, expectation. So don't use unrealistic expectation. And then you need to decide where the baby will born, in this hospital, in this hospital, if it's in the hospital, in this location, or in this location, depend on the levelness, level of sickness, and level of care you provide. 
Now you need a list of equipment, of course. So I'm not gonna go through it, but it's the best way to do this equipment is to categorize it depending on the system. So you have a suction, you have intubation, you have medications, cardiovascular, respiratory, and so on. Uh, now, uh, part of the initial care is uh, training, such as NRP. Skilled physician, at least two for any babies less than 28 weeks. Two resus nurse. You need one extra nurse on RT. You need to have a golden hour guidelines. You need to have gentle guidelines. You need to have IBH bundle, lung protection strategy, uh, protocol for feeding. You need con pain and concentration. Remember, pain and, and, and sedation, con pain control and sedation. People forget about that. So remember, that's one. It's a barbaric action to intubate a baby without sedation. And people say, oh, it's an emergency. So for me, emergency is you are not able to bag. If you are able to provide hard ventilation, this is not an emergency. Unless the baby has no heart rate and you are not able to provide uh, hand ventilation, or you're providing hand ventilation, but you're not picking up. That's called emergency when you're coma. Otherwise, there is no emergency. And I face emergency in an ICU once every three months, uh, three years. I rarely uh, face a situation that I intubate without sedation. So remember, sedation, pain control is not a patient right. It's a human right not allowed to intubate a baby without even a 23 weeks. You need to sedate, otherwise you'll have bad outcome. Now you need to have a list of high-risk deliveries from maternal condition, fetal condition, antipartum complications or delivery complications. <coughs> and sometimes it happened post. So if you are not attending, you have to have a response team through code blue. And then you need to put a list, which one you attend, which one you will not attend by a pediatrician. Setting, you need independent or resuscitation room. You cannot care sick babies with the mama, mother for various reasons. The temperature, the situation, two teams communication, the uh, infection, and the, the resuscitation room should be linked to the delivery and linked to the operation room and linked to the an ICU. We have a specific thermal condition requirement and the equipment, of course. So you can see here a resuscitation room. So you can see it's a fully equipped. So we take care of everything before we move the baby to an ICU. So you can see that it has a, a dragger baby log that has a jet. I know in, in, in Middle East there is no jet. Um, but, but you can see that we have inhaled nitric oxide, cooling system, monitors, infusion pumps. So it, it is a full unit. It, and you can see it's a dragger baby log omnibed, uh, very, uh, very expensive, uh, uh, um, a very expensive uh, incubator. Now you can see how it's well equipped, provide with everything and you have three beds. Uh, this is the third bed and you can see we have all the requirements, the paperwork, are listed and categorized, the towels, the, all the supplies. Uh, you can see, um, have menu. You can see the transport bag uh, uh, equipped, uh, labeled and checked by papers. Uh, you can see all the required doses and protocols. Uh, you can see that access, rest, everything is there. Uh, you can see also the portable X-ray machine and it's a parking slot. And you can see the supplies. It is mobile, it is categorized, and it is labeled, and it's checked. So I don't need to think. I have delivery, I just pull the machine. And, uh, and that uh, tro trolley that have all these medications are ready to move anywhere. And it's always being checked every eight hours or 12 hours and fill the supply. And it should have a registry and uh, uh, a signature that's being checked. and. You can see that we have a portable uh, transport machine that you can see it's a motorized. Uh, you can see it can be drived uh, and it can see you can use it also by mobile. You can move it by mobile and you can see it's very heavy because you can see the ventilator, the high frequency, the inhaled nitric oxide, 
the uh, oxygen, the uh, bag, the uh, transport bag, the supply. You can see how many cylinder, whether it's oxygen or nitric oxide. Uh, you can see it has up on, uh, on and it, it is powered. It has lots of batteries. And by the way, this is uh, um, made by a student, a PhD student in bioengineer. It's like a handmade. It's very important to have a portable transport machine. Now, um, you need to have a specific, uh, please stop me if you have any question, a specific requirement for uh, Britain baby, uh, polyethylene bags, skilled personnel, surfactants, skin care, uh, small sized line, hot diapers, controlling body uh, uh, room temperature. Remember, if your room temperature below 25, mostly 23 or 24 will not survive. You need CPAP. Each baby, even 21 freaks, deserve CPAP. And not constant flow CPAP, not bubble CPAP. It should be variable flow CPAP with fluidic flip and generator. It's very important to use that. Otherwise, it will increase, increase work of breathing and you will have high incidence of uh, need to, to, to catheterize the trachea. When you have a new joiner, you need training, 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 and training. Very important. What is the challenges for Britain babies? People think always it's a ventilation. Yes, ventilation is important, but hypothermia is way important. Hypoglycemia. Ventilation, IV access, infection, damaging the eye, especially when ventilating. I see people, how they ventilate, how they bag a baby on the eye. Need to protect the brain, protect the lung, and protect capillaries. You need to make sure, treat, and plan for uh, acute complications such as pneumothorax. Fluid, TPN, and feeding. Feeding, feeding, and feeding. Nutrition, nutrition, nutrition. Nutrition, nutrition. You want to take care of baby? Nutrition. You want a better outcome? Nutrition. I'll give you an example. What is the percentage of the amount of the lung at birth in a term baby? Anybody has any idea? What are the percentage of the lung? How much the lung? Skip. Sorry. What is the percentage of lung at birth? How much lung we have? Anybody? So we have 10%. 10% of the lung in a term baby. In a preterm baby, it's way less. So even if you injure the lung, there is 95 to 90% to go. From where this 90 to 90 is come by nutrition. And that's why nutrition is very important for PBD, for example, <coughs> or early extubation of the baby. So it's very important to remember feeding, feeding, and feeding. Now you need to do an antenatal consult. Discuss with parent the limit of viability, whether the baby will survive, and what is the percentage? What is the expected cost? When the baby can go home, what is the mortality percentage and morbidity? What is the expected complication? Take consent for certain blood uh, formula if you're deciding. What is the expectancy from unit? What is your percentages? You may take parent to tour to see the, the unit. You need support to group families, uh, premature babies, support groups. And you need to provide information to parent by their own language. Now, if you can see here, that I have information to parent in English and in Arabic. And it's asked their question and give them survival rate based on the gestation and based on the weight. And answering them some of their common questions and then give them numbers to communicate with me. So what I do, I call the parent every day by phone. I call them when I need uh, emergency and they have WhatsApp to ask me a question if they have. And usually I call them in the morning after the round um, with a witness. So we can record that we call them. Now you need something called premature care plan. This tells everybody what his or her role. And this composed about the previous history, uh, the current pregnancy, the fetal part, the uh, neonatal part and the parent part. So it's signed by three people, obstetrician, neonatologist, and parent before delivery. And should have at the end, fellow updates. So this is valid for one week. So if the baby 23 and turn 24, I have to repeat 
this anti uh, premature care plan with the parent because the outcome will be different. Now you need subspecialty support, loss of subspecialty, cardiology, surgery, infection, nephrology, and so on. Also, we need feeding education support. Even if you don't have team, create a group of nurses, one physician, try to give them, teach them, attend sessions. You can create your own. You can have a SWAT team, also vascular access. You can create these teams are very important. You need social worker, you need so pharmacists. Even if you say you don't have, create them. Say, even if they have no knowledge, you say, who is interesting to be feast? You will say, well, this nurse, this nurse, and this doctor. Create them, let them read. Let them do meeting. Let them do round. Let them attend lectures. Go for conferences. They will build themselves. So you need various, like you need uh, OT, occupational therapist, also uh, physiotherapist. Very important. These teams are very important to create. You need antenatal management, uh, whether intrapartum antibiotics, antenatal steroid, magnesium sulfate. You need to categorize C-section, whether it's a cold, semi-cold, emergency, urgency, and crash. Each one has timing, duration, and expected complication. Um, antenatal ultrasound, very important. Echo and fetal medicine. Now, uh, what information we need from antenatal uh, ultrasound. We need expected weight, very important. We need amniotic fluid index, very important survival point. If it's less or more than 2.5 centimeter, we need Doppler. It's not enough to be. We need umbilical Doppler because tell us the status of the placenta. We need uterine Doppler because tell us the status of the mother, anemia, cardiac, hypertension, diabetes, um, can provide poor. And we need middle cerebral or severe mesenteric artery doubler antenatally. That tells us whether the baby is compensated or not. We need information about malformation and the status of the placenta, whether it's aging or not aging. Very important to do staff meeting before and after. So we do briefing in the morning. Every day we meet. We have this number. We are expecting this. Well, this is our, This is mortality. Uh, we need to sign golden hour sheet if we're expecting. We need to have a gentle care, no harm. Avoid unnecessary tests, early feed, aggressive TPN. We need debriefing also. Briefing, debriefing after. Team assignment, respect, crystal loud communication. Very important to have a checklist. So you can see that the checklist is for nursing, nursing or RT if you have one, and physician checklist. And this you can see in yellow if it's very highly. This is, I think, sorry, I did, this is. Typing error, I think. So it's very important to see, to label high-risk babies that these are in yellow color. You see, these are very, very, very special babies. These babies below uh, uh, 27 weeks. And you can see we have 15 minutes checklist, 30 minutes checklist, 60 minutes checklist. Checklists are very important because we human beings forget always. So checklist is our Ellen, and this is the duty of the third nurse. Uh, so you can see that the checklist continue, and you should have a timetable. You see this timetable, we'll discuss it in details. Very important. This is, I created myself, somebody from UK stole it of me and posted. So I did this timetable myself uh, in 2016, and I presented that time, but somebody uh, without my permission took it. So this is the timetable. This is very important if you want to improve the outcome. So you can see you have birth and you have before birth. So before birth, you need antenatal steroid, control the room temperature and magnesium sulfate. But during birth, you need delay cord clamping. And after, so you can see that you have two minutes CPAP, you should start. 10 minutes, you have peripheral IV. 10 minutes, you give sugar. 20 minutes, you give caffeine. Uh, you can see that Surfactant is not important. You can see it's late. Uh, sepsis workup, central line, all target lines. So you can see birth, golden hour, and 60 minutes. You have expected time of doing between do, uh, ordering and doing the x-ray. Uh, uh, you need to warm up uh, the surfactant before you give it. Uh, remember, gentle care. If you cannot do good, don't do harm. And then you have two hour checklist. دكتور يحيى يس سير تمام يعطيك بالنسبه لل اي في لاين كلها كلها في الدليفري روم ولا الاو ار؟ ايفريثينغ ان دليفري روم بيبي جوست ان اي سي اوريدي 
if you have if you have the setting if you don't have the setting at least you need proper CPAP proper peripheral IV starting dextrose give first meal start TBN and start caffeine then you move to an ICU if you want to intubate in an ICU now remember do not intubate and if you need to intubate, do not give surfactant until you have good functional residual capacity. And uh, why this is a you know, long question because we need to talk about surfactant administration. Any more questions? So debriefing, very important. Every baby, what went well by writing barriers, reasons for not following the timeline, suggestion, any resources or questions. If you don't have, then you need to communicate with each delivery with Ministry of Health. So just make them give up with each. We have baby, we don't have this. We have this, we have this. You send them these copies always. And by this, they, you can improve and they can bring you, even if they are reluctant. They are. So if you didn't see them, every baby, baby passed away because of this, baby passed away because of this. We have this IVH because of this. You always send copies to Ministry of Health about debriefing. Now, very important is NRP. So initial care, very important. So you have the questions and, and this always change. The last, is that the four question, the gestational age, the amniotic fluid, um, additional risk factors and umbilical cord uh, plan. So if it's uh, the, uh, the, the question is yes, that means the baby is not preterm and the fluid is clear and there is no additional risk factors and we have a clear plan for uh, management of umbilical cord, then uh, it's a well baby care, which include uh, delay cord clamping, examination within 24 hours, maybe circumcision, uh, uh, vaccinations, uh, screening, establishing feet. If the answer is no, you initiate an RP. Uh, um, uh, now, if the initiate an RP, if it's uh, no and initiate an RP, and the baby respond to the first steps of resuscitation, um, and it's yes, then you go to monitoring care. So you can see how yeah, we have well baby care and you have monitoring care. The, 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 uh, the, the monitoring care is different from all baby care is just vital signs observation. You can need also sugar level. Remember, sugar is very important. You might need gas, you can do sepsis workup. And remember, please, it's not septic workup. It is sepsis workup. Septic workup means your workup is septic, not clean, dirty. So it means sepsis workup means blood workup for sepsis. So be careful with the term. And you monitor the baby for every two, two hours and you keep the baby for 48 hours in the hospital. Now, if the baby is not responding to the first steps of resuscitation, then you need intensive care. And intensive care means cardiorespiratory and uh, 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 support and, and, and continuous monitoring. Uh, then you need to decide whether further resuscitation or not, depending on the heart rate, baby is apnea or gasping. And it's very important to avoid jargons. When you say gasping, you need to know what is gasping. When you say grunting, you need to know what is gasping. Because most people think grunting is difficult Breathing, that's why, you know, some people think it's a difficult breathing. So please remember, don't use term that you don't know the meaning. So you need to know the meaning of each term. Uh, whether, so the continuous resuscitation depends on the heart rate, whether the baby has difficulty in breathing, labor breathing or, or cyanosis. Um, and the heart rate timing of sugar is very important. Timing of CIPA, very, timing of caffeine, timing of lines, time and indication of surfactant, Avoid strong word. Don't use words like uh, for obstetrician. I, I see people write notes. Use violence. Uh, use uh, manipulation. Take too long. That's not your job. You can say difficult labor, uh, spontaneous labor, precipitate labor, the medical term that internationally accepted. Uh, instrumental delivery. Uh, this word, you can use it. But don't avoid strong words. Avoid jargons. Now it's very important, oh, sorry. So um, I'm gonna, uh, you can see that we have 
um, a set of order on Excel or if you have system. So you can see start and order for babies less than 1500 grams. You can see. So the doctor, you just need to tick on it. Even if you are not expert, they will remind you. Not only that, you can see that each process, so premature care plan, golden hour. You can see birth summary sheet. You see admission summary sheet, TPN order, invasive ventilation order, fluid order, standard order, and so on. You can see it's continuous. Feeding order, feeding protocol for the weight. You see each weight have a feeding order, you see? So there is, you can see these orders. These are set of orders, initial hypothermia set of orders. You can see that there is order, assessment of hypothermia orders. You can see feeding complications when you care, what to deal with it. You can see feeding protocol for baby, for example, two under. So feeding orders are very important or set of orders are very important to remember. Temperature control. Any questions, sir, about this? So far. Dr. Yahya, ارجع ارجع ورا. هل هو هذا السيستم؟ ارجع ورا بعد. لا. Which one? This one? The computerized هذا السيستم. Which one? The orders? أيوة الأوردر. هذا كمبيوتر هذا ولا إيش؟ هذا أكسل. أكسل شيت. أكسل شيت هذا. يعني أنتم تستخدمونه في ال. And I have it in the system. I have it in the system. Uh, same uh, system the hospital, yeah. Yeah, system hospital. Who the system? There is modules. So if you don't have it, most of the systems are not neonatology friendly. They are not designed for neonatology. They are designed for pediatric or adult. That's why they are not. They are not uh, neonatology friendly. So what we do is we give to the IT these modules and they insert it for us. Okay. So it's ready orders. Okay, you can see set of orders. Uh, we have orders for uh, uh, standard orders for babies less than 1500 grams. We have standard orders for fluid. We have standard order for sedation. We have standard order for TBN. We have standard order for initial feeding. We have standard order for feeding protocols, depending, you know, less than 500, 500 to 600, 600 to 700, and so on. We have uh, standard order for uh, hypothermia for uh, cooling or yeah, in, uh, assessment of need for hypothermia, cooling, standard order for ve invasive ventilation, standard for order for non-invasive ventilation. So, and we have um, IVH bundle, we have gentle care and golden hour. So not Excuse everybody me. comes and decide whatever they want, everybody follow, but anybody can change for whatever reason. So if they feel that they need to change, they can change, but after approved by other people. So. And that's very important benefit. Organize the work. Second, if there is out bad outcome, we know that the, the outcome is due to the practice, not due to variation of the practice. Clear? Questions? Yes. Now remember, if you want to be a good neonatologist, control temperature and sugar, not to intubate. Remember, intubation is not important, believe me. Remember, so first, control the room temperature. Very important, 25 to 27. And that will increase your survival rate by 20 to 30% of 23 and 24 weeks. Remember, two minutes of temperature, that's all. Because this can cause blood dyscrasia, can cause um, brain damage, IVH, uh, bleeding, all are due to an infection, all due to temperature when the baby gets cold. So first you do, today do delay cardiac clamping. You need to increase the room temperature, 25 minimum, maximum 27 degrees Celsius. How to dry and how to uh, swaddle. Remember that the skin uh, until seven days have no stratum corneum, so they can ooze fluid easily and they can get cold. So uh, babies 24, 23, 25, uh, until seven days, they are like fish. They are not like a human being. So, or in Arabic, they call it "dam sadid." The stomach dam is not sadid, like a human being. Human being have dam sadid, so that is or dam hot. So we have uh, environmental temperature, we have core temperature, and we have surface temperature. In babies, there is none. All same. 
And remember the core temperature of the mother was the service temperature of the baby. So the mother temperature 36.5, 37.5. So when they come out, <coughs> they get shocked because of the temperature. So there is one first shock. You shock them by the temperature. So the first thing you avoid them shock. And when we say shock, mean shock. They got shock and die. So you cannot shock them by the temperature. They have to have the same core temperature of the mother. So that's why if you keep temperature 25 to 27, that's one. And right away, you put them in a plastic bag and they're warmer. And right away, you connect temperature monitor. This is very important to remember. Second is you need sugar. So you have to try two peripheral IVs. If you couldn't get, you can give them a drop of sugar in their mouth. Don't leave them hypoglycemic, they die. So our target is 10 minutes. If we cannot get it by 10 minutes, we start to give a drop of sugars every two minutes until we get the uh, central line. So if we cannot get two peripheral, we do low level UVC in the labor room, and then we move the baby. The most important that the sugar is already calculated the sugar and the protein already ready to go. We just need the line. So what we do is we give 80 ml and we use expected weight from the antenatally. So let's, and then we use the maximum uh, approximation. So if the weight of the baby uh, expected weight is let's say 820, we use 0 0.9. If it's uh, 890, we use 0 0.9. If it's uh, 620, we use 0 0.7. So it's 80 times 0.7, and then we divide it to two parts. One part is sugar, 40%. The second part is a protein and other infusions. So usually we give 2.5 gram per kg per day, first day. And then we continue until next TPN. So usually our TPN comes around 5 p.m. So if the baby born before midday, before noon, we can order new TPN. So it will come at 5 p.m. But if the baby born at four or five or 10, well, they will have no one. So we will order the starter TBN, which is only uh, aminovine, and we used uh, uh, the 2.5, and then until next TBN comes. So that's very important to start, sugar and TBN. And you start feeding right away. So what we do is we always ask the parent to provide us with about 20 ml of EBM from a donor. Now in, in Canada, we have a DPM bank because they have pulled lady here because of Islam and the uh, milk brotherhood. Well, what we can do, we can do, uh, you can we use specific lady uh, uh, donation. So we start milk right away. And we start usually for babies less than 27, 0. 0.5 every four hours. And we start oral immune therapy. So we put one drop in each angle of the mouth every two hours. Uh, we do skin to skin contact if possible during the uh, delay cord clumping. We use polyethylene uh, bag for babies less than thin, warming bags. Uh, we use always pre warmed uh, radiant time. Remember, heated, humidified. Oxygen, heated, humidified, blended. Now, what you see in the TV, even in adults, that peer people taking oxygen from directly from cylinder, this is inaccurate. This is wrong, even in adult, because we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, created us in a 21%. We cannot survive in a 22%. We die. So you cannot give oxygen, pure oxygen, to a human being, unless it's emergency. Because we don't have the scavengers. Like example, we don't have hemoperxine that remove oxygen radical from our body. These oxygen radical accumulate in our body and causing pneumonitis, Myocarditis, uh, uh, encephalopathy, uh, gastropathy, enteropathy, uh, nephropathy, and the baby die. So you cannot give oxygen more than 30%, more than 15 minutes. Wrong. That's one. Second, it should be heated, humidified, and blended. You cannot give pure oxygen to a human being. You have always to blend it. Even if you are bagging, you have to blend it when you bag. And again, prevent hypothermia and hypothermia, vitals. So see, till now we didn't talk about, about intubation. A delay cardiac clamping from one to three minutes of life. Anybody knows from where the delay cardiac clamping practice came? Anybody, any idea? Anybody? 
It came from Norway, from the midwives. They were keeping the cord attached to the baby until the placenta stopped beating, up to 20 minutes. And then they take placenta and cook it for the mother. They, they eat it, they, take it, they give it to the mother to eat. And that's the practice, and it's very well. Now, cord milking depends on the gestation. <laughs> yes, they cook it and give it to the mother. <laughs> yeah, that's the practice came from there. And uh, so um, it's very important also to have a, a guideline about cord milking. Above 27 weeks are beneficial, below 27 weeks are not according to the evidence. Now, when you do delay cord clamping, uh, it's very important when you do resuscitation not to cut the cord. Because in the resuscitation, we give normal saline bolus. You have a placenta. So when you have a baby, do cord milking because you have a free effortless bolus. So when you have a baby sick, difficult labor, don't panic. Don't allow the, the person to be panicked. You need cord milking. And you need to have a plan for delay cord clamping, whether it's a vaginal or, 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 or surgical. And you need to have a plan, the duration, and when to terminate if something happened to the baby or the mother. Because most people say, baby is not breathing. <coughs> I don't care if the baby is breathing, as far as the heart rate is more than 100. If the heart rate is more than 100, continue delay cord clamping. Because there is no way a human being is more than 100 and he's not breathing. But sometimes you don't see it. It's very shallow. Now, airway. Timing of CPAP. Very important to start CPAP within less than two minutes. Because you prevent collapses. And you have better functional residual capacity. You will have better response to a surfactant later. And when you use CPAP, we're talking about variable flow CPAP. Not constant flow CPAP. Not the ventilator generated CPAP. We're not talking about bubble CPAP. You also make sure that there is no need for suction. Don't take the content of the stomach, even if it's blood. It's a very good nutrition. Even if it's junky, even if it's green, don't take it. If baby need, we'll vomit it. Don't suction. It causes trauma. It causes bradycardia. You take a nutrition and uh, uh, you lose valuable time. Now you need to know that intubation is not important. Most of babies, 23 weeks, can survive about 50% without intubation. When you decide to ventilate, type, setting, and transport, should we do? Oxygen supply. Please remove the word oxygen. It is respiratory support. Oxygen should be blended, heated, humidified. The word oxygen supply, even in textbook, is wrong. It should be, it should be replaced by respiratory support. Uh, should I stop, uh, Dr. Ran, or I continue for next session, Dr. Naif? You have 15 minutes. Okay, so stop me and I can continue next session because it's a lot of talk. Okay. okay. Now, when you give surfactant, in my unit, baby will need surfactant if he's on CPAP, eight or nine centimeter water. He need FiO2 more than 30% for 15 minutes. So we're talking about baby who's not intubated. Now, any baby who's intubated and below 27 weeks, surfactant is indicated. If the baby is not intubated on CPAP, now, if you need FiO2 more than 30% for more five minutes on CPAP of more than 80 centimeter, then uh, surfactant is indicated. Also, other factors uh, like increased work of breathing. Uh, uh, Dr. Yahya, CPAP more than eight, we don't have to maximum. I give 14 and 15 and eight, sometimes I reach 20, believe me. Oh. I give 20 centimeter. Why, why, many have been under, why, why you're afraid of? You tell me pneumothorax or say? Pneumothorax? Never, never. CPAP is a treatment of pneumothorax. Who said that? Pneumothorax is a disease of change. Time, space. Remember, pneumothorax is a disease of change, not stability. Pneumothorax is a disease of change. Time, space, noise. So for example, if you have disease that is not homogeneous, there is change in space, it's a risk of pneumothorax. 
such as aspiration, such as collapses and atelectasis, such as uh, meconium aspiration, or anything change with time. So uh, his respiratory rate is a risk of pneumothorax. Inspiratory time is a risk of pneumothorax. Expiratory time is a risk of pneumothorax. Tidal volume is a risk of pneumothorax. PIP is a risk of pneumothorax. PIP, CPAP, never. C CPAP and PIP is a treatment of pneumothorax. That's what they call it, CPABophobia. Okay, starting uh, beep, how much? Uh, for another 20, I start, 7, 20. I, I start with seven. Seven. I rarely go below seven. Then you, increase, then you increase till... Uh, At, uh, usually, I never reach more than 12, but I sometimes reach above the 12. Okay. But we're talking about variable flow CVAP. Remember, not constant flow CVAP. Constant is dangerous. Now, the older the baby, the less the CPAP I go. Why? Because constant flow CPAP, the, the, CPAP, the flow is constant and the pressure is variable. Variable flow CPAP, the flow is variable and the pressure is constant. So you have constant flow, you have variable flow. No, this is constant flow. You cannot use it for premature babies. They die. Mm -hmm. No, no, you have to have a variable flow CPAP with fluidic flip and nose generator. Not constant flow CPAP. Constant flow from ventilator driven is very dangerous because the CPAP is, is derived by Venturi principle, which is at the expiratory valve in the machine. So the baby will breathe against the machine from the nose to the ventilator. And that will increase no, uh, work of breathing. And this is risk of pneumothorax because very high column of water, very high centimeter of water. You need to have a variable flow CPAP at the nose. You have to have they won't survive. They won't survive them. You need a variable flow CPAP. No, no, variable flow CPAP. Not constant flow CPAP. Generate. You mean you bubble CPAP? Not bubble CPAP. Bubble CPAP is not appropriate for a high dependency unit. Bubble CPAP has lots of leak, has uh, lots of subjectivity, need lots of labor. It's used only for remote areas. But <laughs> variable flow CPAP, such as Fabian, such as uh, Hamilton, such as uh, uh, Ahmed, such as uh, um, Dragar uh, uh, Dragar, no. Dragar is uh, CPAP or ventilator. CPAP and the ventilator, same. The machine. No, no. If you combine it, they are constant flow CPAP. They should be mm. separate CPAP machines. No. Mm. So we need a lesson on the CPAP then. If non-invasive on CPAP, doctor, if that's the case, then you need to know because I think some people are confused between. So we're talking yes. about variable flow CPAP. Remember, babies below 27 weeks, they won't tolerate constant flow CPAP more than 30 minutes. But the doctor, variable flow CPAP. One minute. Ventilation course, ventilation course, ventilation course, ventilation course. Uh, non invasive ventilation. Oxygen delivery, non invasive ventilation. Okay. Here. Variable flow sipa, variable flow sipa, variable flow sipa, variable flow sipa. This is the variable slow C, doctor. Mm -hmm. During, this is coming to the baby. This is coming to the baby. So this is then the baby is inspired. The pressure goes in. The baby breathe out, the pressure went out. They don't go against the machine and the machine also go out. Go out. So you can see when the baby expired, his breathing goes out, not to the machine. And the machine also breathe out. They don't breathe against the baby. When the baby breathes in, it goes to the baby. 
So use the principle called fluidic flip. And this is the nose generator of variable flow CPAP. It can be at the nose, sometimes a little bit away from the nose. Okay, sir? And how is the jihaz? So the jihaz. Oh, you have, uh, wait. Khalat alaiki amni al-internet. Let's say uh, uh, Fabian CPAP. Uh, So let's stop sharing. I don't know why it's, it's, it's very, I mean, uh, this one. See it, Dr. No, it's a constant flow, Sipa. Not me, but it's for transport, for babies more than 30 weeks. Uh, but the problem with constant flow, you have to go with low Sipa because the baby will have increased work. So you need a lower, lower CPAP. And remember, the older the baby, the lower CPAP should be. The younger the baby, the higher CPAP. Why? Because their lungs are very flexible and they are surfactant deficient because you need to create functional residual capacity. In big babies, they have surfactant. The most important, they have a fluid. Their lung is very stiff, so it can cause pneumothorax. So remember, the older the baby, the lower the CPAP. The younger the baby, the higher the CPAP. The younger the baby, the more variable you want, then yeah, you can use time. Uh, you cannot keep baby on a constant flow CPAP for a no, long period of time because they get exhausted and they fail. Clear? Clear. Okay, so let's stop. Sorry, I, I. Do you want me to stop and continue next session or continue? something called surfactant tool I a standard order yani surfactant tool when and how to give surfactant and we agree on so everybody is a practice and this also uh, has a guideline about the second dose so for example in the first dose I give when oxygen is more than 30 minutes for 15 minutes the second dose I give it when the oxygen more than 40 minutes uh, for more than 30 minutes and the third dose, I give it only when I need FI2 more than 50% for at least one hour. And um, uh, I have a plan for uh, whether I give prophylaxis, early rescue or late rescue. Now the, the uh, evidence uh, for early so rescue. If I need FiO2 um, more than 40% uh, more for more than 30 minutes, uh, despite maximizing the CPAP, then I give second dose. The standard after six hours. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah, you have to pass the standard. So I'm talking about the six after six to, to eight hours. Oh, okay. Yeah, but you need oxygen more than 30%, more than 40% for more than 30 minutes. So these are, you need also, what is the volume? So what you're using, Sorvanta, Bless, Curaserve, InfoServe, or synthetic surfactant. Duration for how long you give surfactant. What's the method? Use open method or closed method. Use single lumen or double lumen. Remember, open method is not good for babies less than 27 weeks. Because if you open the HEG and you don't give uh, PPV during surfactant administration, you cause derecruitment. Once you derecruit, once you give surfactant, now you're in three recruit. So you cause derecruitment injury, atelectasis, re-recruitment injury, inflation. So you cause two damage double damage at the same time. Uh, so you need to make sure um, uh, to give invasive or non-invasive, you are using open or closed, such as multi-access catheter, uh, single or double lumen, hand or mechanical ventilation. Uh, do you do x-ray or uh, an x-ray? Do you check the ATT or you don't? And using RSI, rapid sequence intubation, sedation or not, you need also to discuss. Now, before uh, meconium aspiration was a problem, but right now is not a problem because no more suctioning is required. What is your practice to give serpenta? Once, well, uh, position, well. What do you mean? One time, I can, you, I, can you, I can give you a session about surfactant administration, but in general, I use closed method. 
So I use mm. multi-access catheter. So what I do when I intubate, uh, either I change the hub of the ATT from one port to two ports, one for the ventilator and one for surfactant administration. And the, the tube is uh, enclosed within a bag, so it will not be in contact. The surfactant connect to it. So I go in and I go out, push the surfactant. I keep giving the surfactant uh, until uh, not more than 15 seconds. Then I pull out, uh, stabilize the baby, then give another one, pull out. So it can be one alicot, two alicots, three alicots. It depends on the size. And somebody's texting me. Okay, so question is, Doctor, people are asking me a question. Do you want me to answer questions or continue the lecture? Doctor Naif. Okay. Uh, so uh, can, you, can, you, can you clarify more? What is the meaning of handling frequency of sampling chest care? I didn't say chest care. I said gentle care. Okay, so frequency of sampling is how many times you sample the baby per day? So you should have a list how many mil and how many times. So our target is not to sample more than 12 times per week. And also you need to have a volume, how much you took from the baby. Once you take more than 5%, consider a transfusion. Uh, remember that the, 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 the blood in the, it's 70 to 80 mil per kg. So remember then what, depending on the weight, you can calculate how much blood the baby has and how much you will get as a 5%. So consider, I always consider hemoglobin to be more than 12 if I'm ventilated and less than one month and uh, more than 10 if I'm ventilated and after one month and more than 10 if I'm less than one month and not ventilated, and more than eight if I am more than one month and So this is the meaning of the frequency of sampling. Uh, handling means cluster of care. So how many times you touch the baby per day? And when you, so we cluster most of the care during the day. During the night, we change the diaper once or twice. During the day, we change the diaper three times. And during that time, we do the sampling and we do the examination if required. We do not examine the baby unless we need. So that's what we call it, cluster of care and minimal handling. So that's the answer. What you prefer in dealing with uh, such preterm baby, either special single room, it doesn't matter. It, you should always have a safety zone of the baby. So you need two and a half centimeter a meter around the baby. So that's a, 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 the safety zone of the baby. And you need a 30, centimeter around the baby, uh, nobody enter. So you don't enter unless you uh, uh, practice and you need supply for each baby. So you don't mix the supply become between the baby because that's an infection process. So uh, feeding tube, uh, milk, uh, procedures, intubation, stethoscope, all specific for this baby. Um, uh, uh, so it can be multiple room, it can be single room. It depends on the staff, how many staff you have. So obviously if you have uh, one to one, you can make single room, but if you don't, then you cannot. And I have a problem here, we have 12 staff single room. Very good, mashallah, on the next question. And we have a lot of nurses. We have about 62 nurses on 45 So you can provide one to one or no? No. Magda. Yeah, so you cannot use rooms as well for. Uh, uh, so if you put the baby, who will monitor the baby? Yeah, the nurse, the nurse, she had uh, three babies. Actually. In One, rooms? Two, no, it's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's, it is impossible. It is because um, you can use it for feeding baby with their mother. If you can put a bed and put the mothers there, uh, you can use it, uh, call it feeding rooms. Uh, for big babies who uh, they need uh, less uh, support, but uh, there is no human being can move between three rooms and concentrate for eight hours. 
And I don't know how many hours your shift is for nurses, eight to 12 hours, but that's that any human. That's not an infection control and that's not possible. There is no such heroic person that can look at three babies in three rooms. No way. They will miss. Uh, they will uh, ignore. Uh, my unit is 12 hours, mm -hmm. but I, I have no idea which one is better. I guess it depends on the number of nurses. Uh, and I have 62 out of 45. 62, but uh, 62 out of 45. It's a small number. You have, you have very low number. So um, the question is, uh, well, basically, they have to work uh, 48 hours per week. Yeah. So it depends, you know, 48 hours, that's mean uh, how many uh, shifts per week? Four weeks if 12 hours, uh, four yeah. shifts, right? <laughs> yes, if 12 hours. If eight hours, if obviously they have to make more time. Okay, maybe every day if it's eight hours. It depends. They have to work 48 hours. Hmm. But, but, but for, uh, the, for the care, is best 12 or eight? It depends on the level of care. So if it's one-to-one, -one, very high dependent patient, eight hours is way better. Mm -hmm. Because they and will I give up later. Yeah. They will give up. They won't wash their hand. They will start to, they, they, even they say yes, they, they will give up. They cannot. They are human beings. I have a problem, doctor, which is the nurses. I have 50% of the nurses experience this time two years. Well, you need to train them. I do lots of training, doctor. So most of the nurses, they come to me from India, they are not trained. And from Philippines, they are not trained because the uh, hospital is a private and they want like a cheaper nurses. So they bring an untrained nurse at all. So usually uh, we take uh, six months in their training. Uh, we start with the resuscitation, with the drills, with the dealing with them, calculation, dilution, uh, giving medications, infection control, ventilation, feeding, uh, sedation. And then until they reach six months, they can work alone. So this is usually what I do for them. But we train always, always train. Uh, the question is uh, uh, protocol for sedation uh, for Britain baby. So basically what I do is I have the pain score. Uh, either I don't know which one is SNP or Fanigan. Use one of them, modified Fanigan, use Fanigan. And the nurse will score me. And uh, so... Um, if the score from one to two or two to four or more than four. So it depends on situation, whether the baby has central line or not, baby ventilated or not, and what's the FI2 requirement. And then we look to the heart rate. Is it scattered or it's centralized in the morning? And then we decide whether the baby is well sedated or not. Now no procedure without sedation. So intubation, we do RSI, we do three medications, atropine, succinylcholine and fentanyl. Uh, we try to use fentanyl as much as we can, uh, but usually we need to quickly. Then we use alpha-2 agonist. So we have the dexmedetomidine and guanfacine. We use lots of chloral hydrate. And sometimes we use midazolam. Uh, and then we switch between fentanyl and morphine. But we try to minimize it because of hypotension and because of poor bowel motions and you know, constipation sometimes. Um, uh, narcotics and be also to avoid dependency and uh, NAS syndrome or neonatal abstinence syndrome. So that's usually what we are. I have very nice lecture about sedation in an ICU. So we can talk about. Okay, I think I should stop here. Thank you, Dr. Yahya. Thank you. And then we can talk about surfactant more in detail next uh, session because uh, still I have 70 slides, Dr. Uh, no, uh, uh, if you want, if you want, uh, like a short session, I'm okay with that. Come on. Okay. Any question? I'm happy to answer. Allah ibarak biyakum. Ana bil khidmat. Ali, Ali, has a question from the patients, the doctors. Take your breath. Please ask. Thank you, Doctor Yahya, for answering my questions. I'm asking one more question about nebulization for baby, for for babies, yani. What no. you prefer? Nebulization, ventilated or not ventilated? Uh, in both. both uh... Okay. 
which type of vent nebulization? You mean surfactant nebulization or uh, bronchodilators? What exactly does? Yes, I mean bronchodilators. If, if no, maybe have much secretions like this. Never. Well, it's not beneficial. No, it's waste of time. It's a, um, uh, it's weight of. If you need, use inhaler. So I use spacer and inhaler if baby is not ventilated. And if baby is ventilated, I click the inhaler and give one puff. So if I want to use in, in bronchodilator, I give one puff of inhaler. Quick, fast, no spend time, no uh, blockage, not accumulating CO2, no waste of time, easy for nurses. So let's say you got one puff, this is 90 mic, and then you calculate uh, work how much you want. So you click it, I have a port, click it in, connect it to the uh, near the flow sensor and give one puff, disconnect, you're done within a few seconds. So I use inhaler also like adults. Corticosteroids also? Cortic Corticosteroids inhaler, inhaler I don't use. But if you want, there is evidence from the uh, Thai study that uh, they give uh, uh, a combination of uh, uh, surfactant and steroid for chronic lung disease for three days. Uh, I don't use inhaler steroid, never need it. I, I have very good outcome. I never use it. But if I want to use for a chronic lung disease, which rarely I have, like in last year, I have only one chronic lung disease. Uh, I don't have neck, alhamdulillah. I rarely have IVH. I usually have a grade one. Sometime last year, I have one grade four. But uh, I have very good result of not having, because I use lung protection strategy. I use VG, PSV, uh, or high frequency right away. I don't. Uh, use so I need high peep, uh, so I use because in high frequency I can use peep 14. You know that, right? Uh, 12 uh, or map, so I can use map prevent atelectasis. So I have very good outcome, uh, but with the high frequency I need sedation, so I try to avoid it because of sedation, more sedation. So usually I use a lung protection strategy, and I'm very aggressive in nutrition, so I achieve birth weight by day seven. If I don't achieve birth weight by day seven then uh, we need to do a morbidity meeting, why the birth weight was not achieved by day seven. Because remember, more grams, more lung, better outcome. So I rarely need, uh, but if I need, I use systemic steroid. I usually use either Waterberg or uh, dry, uh, DART protocol. Thank you. Use Never, 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 not allowed. Not Dombirion, mm -hmm. not Omeprazole, never. I know the surgeons sometimes, so I have to compromise. I give one or two doses. But if you want to decide, it should be within certain protocol, within certain course for certain purpose. But uh, you, give it, you give it for what, Dr. Uh, Naif? Feeding intolerance. Uh, no, most of feeding intolerance is iatrogenic because of us. Most, I would say 95% of feeding intolerance is man-made. So uh, is either type of milk or duration of milk or way we give milk uh, because we have uh, gastric emptying or reception pressure. And if you give more than the gastric emptying, the baby will vomit right away. So remember each baby has a gastric emptying. You need to calculate it. If, if you give more, the baby will vomit. Most of vomiting is due to, uh, or due to cow milk's allergy. So remember that either cow's milk allergy or improper feeding most of the time. But giving domberidone and this will waste of time, waste of process, more medication, and have no evidence. If you have evidence, hey, you are, then provide. You are not uh, any advice for a nebulizer or uh, use this? Uh... No, no, I never use it. I don't use uh, any uh, anti emetic. I don't use domberidone. I know some of the doctors, um, sorry, I'm not offending, but usually they come from Egypt or from Iraq. Uh, work with me. They are they they have like this kind of practice. Uh, uh, overuse of antibiotics very important to avoid because antibiotics you change and and bioma risk of neck uh, resistance. So um, rarely ever I have babies more than two days on antibiotics unless a culture positive. I don't use inflammatory markers at all. CRP, ESR, procalcitonin not allowed in my unit. Uh, antiemetics are not allowed. Um, less in suppository. Uh, very rarely I use it. If I pass one week without bowel motion, I use it. If I am a premature baby and I am on EBM, one week and seven days. If seven days no pass motion, then yes, I give quarter suppository. Uh, but if the baby has abdominal distension and vomiting and 
no uh, flatus at all, then I do surgical consultation. And sometimes they do irrigation or sometimes they do PR. I, I, you know, sometimes I compromise because I wanna keep working, but I know some surgeons are aggressive. But for me, uh, one week, bowel motion is normal for breastfeeding or EBM baby. Dart protocol? Dart protocol, I rarely need it, very rarely need it, um, maybe once or twice a year, um, because I don't have chronic lung disease. Yes, but I use Dart protocol. It all depends on the first hour. Remember that. It's everything depends on the first hour. It's the, because this is your foundation. You can build very nice house and your house can fall off within one year if the foundation is not good. So everything is above. You need to hit the earth very strong. You have to have very concrete, very well concrete before you build your house. So your foundation is antenatal steroid, magnesium sulfate, delay cord clamping, controlling room temperature, starting sugar, starting caffeine, starting CPAP. IVH bundle, gentle care, golden hour, sedation. Nutrition, feeding, feeding, and feeding, and feeding. You didn't mention, Doctor, uh, you didn't mention surfactant in the first hour. That means it can be delayed. I never give it in first hour. I usually give it after yes. 30 minutes before two hours. No one gives surfactant and you don't have a functional residual capacity. And we can explain that in a session on how to get surfactant. But remember, surfactant is not an emergency medication. Surfactant yes, yes. is not in the labor room. And nutrition is important. Uh, sugar is important. CPAP is important. Temperature control is important. Uh, caffeine is important. Caffeine be... Vari variable yes. so CPAP is important. Surfactant is not important. You can delay it. Very important to remember that. Up to how many hours? Usually I give it before two hours if the baby is intubated. If the baby is not intubated, I give it within six hours. If the baby is intubated, I give it within two hours. If not intubated and the FI2 went up, usually I give it depend. So if the FI2 within six hours goes more than 30% to for more than 15 minutes, I intubate, give surfactant, extubate. I don't put the baby, I uh, don't do x-ray, I don't, I do lung ultrasound, but not all the time, but I don't keep the baby ventilated. I extubate right away. When you stop caffeine straight, Victor? I stop caffeine straight uh, when the baby 34 weeks, 33, 34 weeks, and there is no ABDs, apnea, bradyde, desaturation for one week. And the baby is off support. So if the baby is off support, no ABDs for one week, I stop. And usually it's a 33, 34 weeks. If the baby is still on support, I continue until the baby is off support and seven days off uh, ABDs, I stop. So sometimes I continue up to 40 weeks. And I if, I cannot, I, if I have to send baby home within the seven days, I keep the baby on caffeine for one month. And then I bring the baby back. I do sleep apnea study. And if there is none, I stop the caffeine. بارك الله فيك دكتور الله يحفظكم بارك الله فيك يعطيك العافيه احنا نبغى صراحه محاضره عن جولدن اور تكون في في النايت متى يكون وي كان كونتينيو ذيس سلايد ار فيري امبورتنت تو كونتينيو خلاص وي كان وات وي كان دو اي كان كم تو يو ون ون داي اند وي كان دو دريل اند يو نيد ذيس دو دريلز اجين اند اجين اند اجين انتل بيبل يو نو ذيس شود بي ستارت لايك يور نيم So I, I, what's your name? I, my name is Naif. So what I will do, I will do, 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 do this. Everybody know what we should do. Drill again and again and again and again, you know. So we do drills, we do drills every uh, two weeks, every one month in our unit, despite we practice it always. Allah you. Allah you. على راسي اي وقت انت اختار انا الاربعاء اوف الصبح فاي كان جيف او بالليل براحتك يعني ممتاز بارك الله فيك دكتور الله يعطيك العافيه شكرا جزيلا شكرا لحضوركم السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام